Hello and welcome to Indus News. Live from Islamabad, I'm Naila Shudra and these are the headlines. Two female Supreme Court judges have been shot dead by gunmen in Afghanistan's capital city of Kabul. The spokesperson for the top court said that the judges were traveling to their office in an official vehicle where they were attacked. The spokesperson added that the driver of the vehicle and another person were wounded in the attack. No group has claimed responsibility so far. Libya's rival Western and Eastern factions have agreed on a mechanism for choosing a new government. At the Libyan Political Dialogue Forum in Geneva, acting UN Libyan envoy Stephanie Williams said that the selection of a transitional government could be possible in several weeks. Thirty-two people have been killed in clashes between Arabs and non-Arabs in Sudan's western Darfur state. Medics say at least 79 others were wounded and fear that the death toll may rise. The Sudanese authorities have imposed a round-the-clock curfew in the state following the violence. In the United States, all 50 states have been placed on high alert for possible armed protests ahead of President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. Thousands of National Guards have been deployed in Washington, D.C. to secure the event on the 20th of January. The FBI has warned of possible armed marches by President Donald Trump's supporters in all state capitals. Brazil has reported over a thousand deaths for the fifth day in a row as the country's death toll surges to over 200 and 900. In Pakistan, over 2,500 people tested positive and 43 more lost their lives overnight, raising the toll close to 11,000. Globally, the virus has claimed over 2 million and 21,000 lives while infecting nearly 94.5 million. And in football, Leicester City have defeated Southampton 2-0 in their Premier League encounter at the King Power Stadium. James Madison and Harvey Barnes netted one each to seal the win for the Foxes. The win moves Leicester City to second place on the league table with 35 points. For more news and details, stay tuned. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back. We start from Afghanistan, where two female Supreme Court judges have been shot dead by gunmen in the capital city of Kabul. A spokesperson for the top court said that the judges were traveling to their office in an official vehicle when they were attacked. The spokesperson added that the driver of the vehicle and another person were wounded in the attack. No group has claimed responsibility so far. Police said that they are investigating the incident. Violence has surged across Afghanistan in recent months, especially in Kabul, amid the ongoing peace talks in Doha. A large number of protesting farmers have planned to move to Delhi borders as early as the 20th of January to avoid long jams on the roads. They will participate in the tractor parade planned for the Republic Day on the 26th of January in the capital. Farm leaders estimate that the participation of almost 100,000 tractors from over 7,000 villages from Haryana alone. Meanwhile, opposition party Congress attacked Prime Minister Narendra Modi, saying he has become a slave of the big capitalists. Over the 54 days of protests, over 80 farmers have lost their lives, out of which four have committed suicide in protest against the farm laws. The ninth round of discussions between the government and the farm unions ended in a deadlock, with the next round set for the 19th of January. 
Libya's rival Western and Eastern factions have agreed on a mechanism for choosing a new government. The development came during a United Nations-led Libyan political dialogue forum in Geneva. Acting United Nations Libyan envoy Stephanie Williams said that the selection of a transitional government could be possible in several weeks. The United Nations said that the transitional government will lead the war-torn country to elections in December. Stephanie Williams said that the agreement represents the best possible compromise on the issue. However, the envoy also warned that there would be still people trying to obstruct peacemaking efforts. Libya has been split between two warring fractions since 2014. 32 people have been killed in clashes between Arabs and non-Arabs in Sudan's West Darfur state. Medics say at least 79 others are wounded and fear the death toll may rise. The Sudanese authority have imposed a round-the-clock curfew in the state. The violence erupted in the provincial capital of Jenina, where an Arab man was stabbed to death in a camp of internally displaced people. The suspect has been arrested. Iran has rejected France, Germany and Britain's criticism over its plans to produce uranium metal. Iran's atomic energy organization said that the issue of metallic uranium factory differs from the production of advanced fuel to be used. In a statement, the AEOI said that the production of metallic uranium in accordance with a strategic act approved by the parliament. It added that the advanced fuel silicide program was first presented to the IAEA more than two years ago. Earlier, the three European nations urged Iran to halt its plans to produce uranium metal. They warned that the latest violation of the 2015 nuclear deal will have grave military implications. They also called on Iran to return to full compliance with its nuclear deal. Iran has tested long-range missiles and drones against land and sea targets in a large-scale military show of force. The Revolutionary Guards fired long-range ballistic missiles that traveled 1,800 kilometers. Iran's Armed Force Chief of Staff Major General Mohammad Bahiri said that Tehran has no intention for any aggression, but warned that any aggression towards Iran will be met with full force. The tests were conducted amid heightened tensions with the United States. Saudi Arabia's Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan says Riyadh will reopen its embassy in Qatar in the next few days. This comes a week after Saudi Arabia and three other Arab states agreed to fully restore ties with Qatar in a United States-backed deal. Speaking to the media, Prince Faisal said that it is only a matter of logistics when asked about the embassy reopenings. He added that the full diplomatic relations will resume. The countries have opened up their airspaces to each other and some flights have resumed. Riyadh and its allies cut ties with Qatar in 2017, accusing it of backing terrorism charges Doha denies. In the United States, all 50 states have been placed on high alert for possible armed protests ahead of President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. This comes amid FBI warnings of possible armed marches by President Donald Trump's supporters in all the state capitals. Thousands of National Guards have been deployed in Washington, D.C. to secure the event on January 20th. In Washington, a man has been arrested carrying fake inaugural credentials, a loaded handgun, and over 500 rounds of ammunition. Among other states, Michigan, Virginia, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania also activated their National Guards to strengthen security. The state of Texas has closed its capital through Inauguration Day. Meanwhile, President-elect Joe Biden announced his science and technology team elevating the science and technology policy director to cabinet-level status for first time in U.S. history. I was telling uh, these four brilliant scientists as I stood in the back, in a way, they, uh, this is the most exciting announcement that I've gotten to make in the entire cabinet, raising this to a cabinet-level position in one case. These are among the brightest, most dedicated people, not only in the country, but the world. According to a memo seen by U.S. media, Biden will sign executive orders rejoining Paris Climate Accord and ending travel ban on Muslim countries on his first day. 
Brazil has reported over a thousand deaths for the fifth day in a row as the country's death toll surges to over 200 and 900. Brazil Air Force and Venezuela are flying in respirators and oxygen as scarcity aggravates COVID crisis in Brazil's Amazonas. Mexico has registered its worst week yet of the pandemic with record high infections and more than 7,000 COVID-19 deaths. The Mexican government says the real number of infected people and deaths is likely significantly higher than 140,000 official count. Britain has given almost 3.6 million people a first dose of coronavirus vaccine so far. The government has turned the country's cathedrals into vaccine centers as part of the extensive inoculation drive. The Chinese mainland reported 109 new COVID-19 cases out of which 96 were locally transmitted. Over in France, a curfew has taken effect to slow coronavirus spread. Globally, the virus has claimed over 2 million and 21,000 lives while infecting nearly 94.5 million people so far. While in Pakistan, 43 people have lost their lives to COVID-19 over the past 24 hours. This takes the country's death toll to over 10,951. The Ministry of Health says 2,417 new infections were detected overnight. It said currently there are more than 34,000 active COVID-19 cases in the country. The ministry said out of over 519,000 countrywide cases, more than 473,000 people have recovered. Earlier, Pakistan approved the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine for emergency use. Pakistan Navy's ship PNS Nasser has embarked on a humanitarian assistance mission to the African countries. The PNS Nasser is on an overseas deployment in coordination with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The ship is on its way to African countries to reach flood-stricken and drought-ridden areas in Djibouti, Sudan and Niger. The PNS Nasser will also undertake a goodwill visit to Mamosa and Kenya. In France, thousands took to the streets in Paris to protest against a new security bill. The bill is a part of President Emmanuel Macron's drive to get tougher on law and order ahead of the elections in 2022. The government introduced the security bill to increase its surveillance capabilities. It also aims to restrict rights on circulating images of police officers in the media and online. But opponents say that the plans will restrict civil liberties. In the past three months, France has been hit by a wave of protests taking aim at the proposed bill. Britain has invited G7 leaders to the group's first in-person meeting in nearly two years. The summit will take place in England's southwestern resort of Caribbean Bay in Cornwall in June. In a statement, Prime Minister Boris Johnson said that he aimed to forge a consensus to revive the global economy from COVID-19 crisis. He stressed the need to unite with a spirit of openness to create a better future. Johnson termed the coronavirus pandemic the most destructive force and the greatest test of modern world. The last year's G7 meeting, due to be hosted by the United States, was cancelled because of the pandemic. G7 leaders have not met in persons since the 2019 meeting in France. In Austria, thousands have gathered in the capital, Vienna, to protest against the coronavirus restrictions. They called on the government to resign just as Chancellor Sebastian Kurz held talks about extending the curbs. Waving Austrian flags, most of the demonstrators refused to wear masks or respect social distancing rules. The Alpine country is currently in its third lockdown in a bid to bring the pandemic under control. Austria has recorded around 7,000 deaths from COVID-19 since the start of the pandemic. It's now time for a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Guatemala has blocked a part of a caravan of around 9,000 Honduran migrants headed for the United States. They were trying to reach the United States, trying to escape poverty and unemployment amid hurricanes and the pandemic. The migrants entered the Guatemala by pushing past about 2,000 police and soldiers posted at the border. 
with hundreds being detained by the Guatemalan military. In a statement, Guatemalan President Alejandro Giamatti called on the Honduran authorities to contain the mass exodus. Earlier, Mexican and Central American governments made it clear that they will not let the caravan through. The death toll from the earthquake in Indonesia, Sulawesi Island, has risen to 73. More than 820 people were injured after the 6.2 magnitude quake hurt the island. The country's disaster mitigation agency said over 27,800 people have been displaced. It said that the police and military officers have been deployed to crack down on looting in several parts of the region. The agency added that an emergency response status has also been put in place for two weeks. On Friday, a tremor leveled at the hospital and damaged severely hundreds of buildings. A volcano in Indonesia's East Java province has erupted, spewing a cascade of ash. According to the geological agency, the volcano poured clouds of smoke that went up as high as 5.6 kilometers. Mount Simiru is the highest volcano on the Java island. However, there have been no reports of casualties or evacuations. Simiru is also known as the Great Mountain and is one of the most active volcanoes in the country. Other volcanoes in Indonesia have also shown signs of activity recently. In the Chinese city of Shenyang, four pandas have been spotted playing with balls, rolling on snow and climbing snow-wrapped tree trunks. More in this report. In China, an interesting and vivid scene has been presented as giant pandas were spotted playing in the snow blank zoo. The pandas were released into the snow field for enjoying the fresh air at the Shenyang Forest Wild Animal Zoo. We prevent them from staying indoor for too long. When playing outside, they can breathe the fresh air, have contact with different smells, and enjoy a wider space for activities. So we let them get outside when there is enough sunlight in the afternoon. Especially after snowfalls, they would be so excited playing in the snow. Since the pandas will consume more energy when playing games in the snow, the zoo workers have prepared nutritional bamboo poles and bamboo shoots for them. In addition, they have also installed underfloor heating facilities and air humidity control devices to create a warm environment for the pandas. We have installed an underfloor heating system to keep the indoor temperature at around 15 degrees Celsius. To avoid the air becoming too dry due to the heating facilities, we would place some water and regularly spray water in the indoor sports field and their rooms to keep the air humidity at a comfortable level. A zoo worker says outdoor activities are good for the health of pandas. United States China Business Council has called on the United States to reduce tariffs on China. The joint report with Oxford Economics said that the move would benefit global economic development. The report said Washington has long benefited from its trade with Beijing. It noted that the U.S.-China economic trade war has resulted in an estimated peak loss of 245,000 jobs in the United States. The report added that the trade war escalation may result in a loss of $1.6 trillion to the United States economy, with a peak loss of 732,000 jobs over the next five years. The flag carrier of the United Arab Emirates has stopped flights to three biggest cities of Australia. The step was taken as Australia further restricts international arrivals over fears of new virus strains. In a statement, Emirates Airlines said that the flights are suspended to Sydney, Brisbane and Melbourne. It added that the airline will still run two flights a week to Perth. The suspension has created a huddler for thousands of Australians attempting to return home. Australia's borders have effectively been closed since March last year to curb the spread of the virus. Major stock markets in the Gulf are trading somewhat subdued as investors await quarterly and full-year corporate results over the next few weeks. The Dubai index is leading the losses, dipping close to half a percent after Emirates NBD Bank and blue chip developer Imar Properties slipped. Saudi Arabia's benchmark index felt marginally driven down by a decline in the banking and healthcare sector. In Abu Dhabi, the index eased marginally as Telco Elitsta and 
First Abu Dhabi Bank retreated. The Qatar index also edged lower, weighed down by a fall for the Gulf's biggest lender, Qatar National Bank. It's now time to take a look at the weather around the world. For the latest news updates, you can follow us on our social media at indus.news.